Hi, this is Patrick from Startup Zone, and today we have another amazing guest. Um, he's from Singapore, but not um, uh, only living there. Uh, he's a citizen from uh, England. Um, he's one of the top 100 most influential LinkedIn bloggers, uh, one of the top social sellers in Asia Pack. He was awarded Asia's most influential digital media professional and small business rising star. Author of several in international bestsellers, um, owner of several businesses, and uh, you can see it already. He is the only Nasdaq <laughs> listed CEO. Not Nasdaq that. listed. Don't oh, mention right. Nasdaq. <laughs> oh, no, we left no. Nasdaq two years ago. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, but okay. Let's say you were the only Nasdaq. Uh, well, I, I'm the only CEO with the Mohawk. That's how we now the position of the brand now is very much the only CEO with the Mohawk. We just dropped the Nasdaq. Okay, that's great. So, welcome and uh, thank you very much. Uh, sure, thank Chris. you read for uh, taking in time and uh, talking to us today. Pleasure, thank you. Uh, maybe you let us know a little bit about yourself, where you're from and how, <laughs> uh, what was your way to Singapore actually? Uh, well, I'm obviously English, um, so I left England 10 years ago because I predicted Brexit uh, and the chaos that Brexit would bring. Um, but also, I mean, in all seriousness, that is the mentality of, of British people versus Singapore. Why I left Singapore, Singa uh, UK to get to Singapore is literally because I was an entrepreneur in London and I found it very closed. I found it where I only, my only clients were in England. Mm -hmm. uh, I never had a European brief. You know, it's very much that's the way England is. Where, where I came to Singapore, and it was a choice between Singapore and Hong Kong, and I settled in Singapore um, 10 years ago now. Um, the first thing I learned was the government there and everyone there going, okay, we're going to target the whole of Asia Pacific. And you go, the whole of Asia Pacific? That's like two thirds of the world's population. Are you sure you mean the whole? Like India and China and Japan and Australia and Indonesia? And hey, okay, just get on with it. And it's just like, it's, it's expected there. Uh -huh. that you target other people. So I saw an opportunity to test myself. I was going to be year, uh, year 40. Yeah. So if you don't test yourself then, if you don't leave your country, then um, you really never were going to do it. So I went there. Um, I just had my second divorce. So it was a good time okay. to actually do yeah. it. So it's like, yes, I've had another divorce since then, but that's another story. But it's a good time to kind of like, okay, let's do this, a clean break. Um, also, I hadn't seen the sun for like several years because <laughs> London's been like, you know, in the summer it's gray and drizzly. Yes. Um, and in the winter it's dark and grizzly. And that's basically the difference between summer and winter. Um, yes. And it is amazing to be in Singapore because it's just like you have learned so much. And I started using LinkedIn um, by coming over and literally I didn't know anybody. So I came over knowing literally nobody. I used my connections in the UK. I had 200 LinkedIn connections 10 years ago. And I said, do you know somebody in Singapore? And they all said, or well, many of them said, yes, go and see this person. Go and see this person. That's amazing. And then when I wrote to them on LinkedIn, they all said, yes. And it's like, this is amazing. If this had happened the other way around, people in London would not have said yes. Yeah. They would have said, no, go away. Who do you think you are? Whereas the Singapore, yeah, no, come, come in. And they were, you know, Filipinos and Malaysians and Singaporeans and English people and expats and Australians and Europeans. And it's like, uh, even Americans were friendly over there. It's like, well, yeah, Americans are even open-minded and friendly over here. It's amazing. <laughs> Take them out of America. They suddenly become different people. It's absolutely incredible. And literally, um, you know, people have a different mentality. And my first job there, I got through networking on LinkedIn. And it was literally, I was running the whole of Southeast Asia. My second job was I was running the whole of Asia Pacific. Mm -hmm. And my third job was like, we're doing something global. <laughs> and it's like, this is quite amazing for the people in Singapore have a completely different mindset. And I created Black Marketing because I saw the power of LinkedIn. I got my first three jobs using LinkedIn, mm. and then those jobs were doing lead generation and marketing, and I was using LinkedIn to find people, because I figured, if you can use LinkedIn, at, which at the time was purely about recruitment, if you can use it for recruitment, you can also use it to find the person to pitch. And so as other people were finding people to place into roles, I was finding CMOs and CEOs in Shanghai and Japan and Sydney and you know, um, India and Indonesia and pitching them, going, this is amazing, this works. And that's they, several years later, they created what they call now social selling and sales navigator. The town didn't have that. So we just, I just used the data in the different bit. I think, I think LinkedIn looked quite different. Like yeah, oh, very. Ago when you were saying that, but that's, that's basically how you started, right? Correct. Uh, was, again, the reason you choose Singapore over Hong Kong? Was there a special uh, reason? Basically, we looked at things like, I mean, Britain had just left, for example, Hong Kong, and it was very mm -hmm. much clear uh, what was going to happen in terms of you know, China coming mm -hmm. in. And you can see that now when I went there, first of all, people used to speak English, now they don't. Uh, you know, many, many people now don't speak as much English. Now, Mandarin is now number one language there, where Singapore is English first. Yeah. 
So from the point of view, uh, you know, from my point of view, I'm terrible at languages. So go back to your earlier question about, you know, was I any good at school? No, I was terrible at school. I failed everything at school. I couldn't even speak French, let alone Mandarin um, or Pahasa or anything else. So, you know, I knew that if you know, go with a, an English-speaking country okay, versus okay, a non-English-speaking country, I'm going to choose this. Yeah. And also, if you get into things like the, little things like the airport, you know, I spend so much time in Changi Airport that actually it makes a hell of a difference if you go through Changi Airport and you can literally get out in five minutes and be home in ten, whereas Hong Kong you can't. That's Hong Kong takes a long time to get out. It's a horrible airport and it's an hour from the city. Yeah. So, and also people have told me that basically Hong Kong has obviously lots of pollution and it's to be, there's no greenery there, whereas I read up about things like Lee Kuan Yew, for example, who believed in greenery in Singapore to not only cool things down, but also from a, a visual point of view, an aesthetic point of view. Um, so I was very impressed when I went there and go, wow, this is amazing. And then the shops were open till like midnight on a Sunday, which, you know, coming from the UK, it's like they close, you know, close at four o'clock <laughs> yeah, in the afternoon that. on a Sunday. They close. It's like, what do you mean they close? Like, you heard the thing called the internet? That. And, but the other way, the other way is also funny, right? Like people visiting you, like Asians, and it's like, hey, I want to go for shopping on mm. Sunday, but everything is closed. And they, uh, yeah. yeah, of course. <laughs> it's like, uh, okay, that sounds cool. So you uh, don't seem to regret that at all. You made that. Oh, no, it's the best thing I ever did. It literally, it. it's probably the best decision of my life. Nice, nice. Because it transformed my business and it transformed myself yeah yeah talking about uh, business or businesses i mentioned it before mm. uh, several businesses you just yeah. told me before is seven in total <laughs> you started with the black market yes is that, that yeah. was your first yeah like, that's our first one it yeah. still is uh, the, the flagship yeah. brands i'll be going in six years mm. um so very much that does linkedin for entrepreneurs and smes so we do things like social selling for example mm. we generate leads we do personal branding we do employee branding yeah. but for smes yeah. Very much for SMEs. For people like you and I who run companies, for example, yeah. we work for you because you might not have a marketing team or a sales team. And if you do, they don't yeah. know how to do LinkedIn. Mm. So we do that. And we do, and Dark Art does PR yeah. for entrepreneurs, but we amplify it on LinkedIn. Yes. Um, Mohawk does TripAdvisor, but combines that with LinkedIn, aiming okay. at hotels and hospitality. Yes. Yep. Um, Spark <laughs> does Tinder and LinkedIn. Oh, that was an interesting Yes, one. that's the interesting uh, one. So, say a little bit more about that. Uh, well, well, that, that one... Uh, that one um, is very much a personal thing. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you want to meet a professional and you don't want to have a fake profile on Tinder, for example, mm -hmm. <coughs> the yeah. best, way of, <coughs> excuse me, best way of doing that is to basically have someone look at your LinkedIn profile and say, oh yeah, you're a real person with a real job with a real income. Because oh, okay. um, it's very easy, particularly in Singapore, to meet the wrong kind of woman, for example, shall we yeah. say, on Tinder. <laughs> Okay. Who may not have a real job okay. um, and may just be there for a few a few days, yeah. and then you meet the other kind of woman there who basically may be a domestic helper, for example, yeah. and they can only see on a Sunday, which is fine, but it's very limiting, and you also yeah. don't very much to talk about. So you know, you get over the initial, you know, let's have you know, let's have fun, all the rest of it, and then you go, okay, this isn't really going anywhere, is it? I can't see you until every Sunday, and then um, so this is to basically. I, so I always used to put my LinkedIn mm -hmm. on my Tinder, for example. So okay, check me out. Here's the reassurance. I'm, I'm a okay. real person. Because women also, you know, they have to have some kind of protection on Tinder and who they're going to meet. I mean, Singapore's very safe. But even so, if they can check out and go, okay, he's a real person with a real... You've at least got something to talk about as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's the idea behind that. And then we created Social Selling, which is a conference brand. So that's the second year now. Um, and that sold out at Microsoft last year. And then our seventh brand is Rockstar Keynote Speaker, which is basically a female speaker bureau. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to promote, and we are promoting yes. female speakers because yes. basically well, like, yeah, yeah. there's lots of, lots of um, uh, prejudice out there, for example. Lots of people just picking male speakers because they're a man and not because of quality. Let's come back to that a little sure. bit later. That is really a, a very interesting topic, I have to say, so I want to put a little more time sure. on that right. one. Um, so seven businesses, uh, and then you said like everything is based around LinkedIn, right? Yes, like correct. All seven brands are LinkedIn orientated, correct. Right? Yeah. 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 And even your books, right? So yes. three books, I think, are yes. out. Yeah, I was uh, reading into one, the LinkedIn Mastery for Entrepreneurs, That's correct. which yep. like, summarizes pretty yeah. Really a lot, I would yeah. say, um, about what to do, what not to do yeah. with your LinkedIn profile, your personal and also your Correct. company yeah. one. And what I find really cool is that you put it on a web page, the, um, what is that, the Smashwords? Yeah. Where I got it for $3, like the other books. Uh, yeah. So this one, right, for $5, yeah. something like that. That's, that's, really, that's really And we put it on Kindle as well. The idea is to get people to read them. Yeah. So we have the three books, and basically we put them on Kindle quite cheaply if we want people to read them. Because ultimately, if you read the book, then you're yeah. more likely to buy our services, engage our services recommend us and so forth as well so it's basically a lost leader to basically promote the services 
I read in the foreword of the LinkedIn Master for Entrepreneurs mm. that you said like you were appearing on the front page of local papers in Singapore for all the wrong and right <laughs> reasons. And of course, I want to know like, okay, what, what what are those wrong reasons? Oh, you didn't you didn't Google it? Did you you didn't Google did Chris Reed Singapore? Oh, yeah. like, if you Google that, if you Google Chris Reed Singapore, Singapore, Singapore taxi drivers, for example, you can see you see all the abuse I got for basically writing a blog about Singaporean taxi drivers, and I got fired as well. So I got fired. Um, from, a, from my co- uh, my job at the time, uh, which is actually not a bad thing to do. I was a couple of there, years there, <laughs> and uh, I got fired for writing this blog because it went to the front page and all the newspapers are talking about it. I went, oh, okay, I made a big mistake here. Um, and so it was quite a big lesson to learn. Um, but it also got me quite a lot of name recognition. So I, kind of, I learned, kind of like, okay, because the controversy kind of works here. So then after a while, people forgot how, why they knew about me or why they'd heard about me. They just remembered the name, uh, which yeah. is no bad thing. I thought, okay, so I've repeated that trick several times since. <laughs> With varying well, degrees right of success. Reasons, right? oh, no, both. I mean, the, we've done it both both ways. We've, um, I deliberately sometimes create controversy, for example, mm-hmm. to get get that name recognition, to get uh, the most read um, column or the most read engagement, for example, because I have what I call a Marmite brand. Mm-hmm. Uh, you may know Marmite? No, okay. So uh, Marmite is something that the English people kind of like um, either love or hate. It's kind of like this paste. Oh, okay. um, and people either go, or they go, wow, I love Marmite. Yeah, okay. um, so basically that's a bit like my brand. You either love me or you hate me kind of thing. But you need that kind of discord and uh, kind of like in that... Um, yeah. That passion on both sides mm. to basically make people talk about it say, no, I like Chris Reed. No, I hate Chris Reed. <laughs> so it is very much that <laughs> that's come okay. together. So that's the it's best way of doing it. About Precisely. It, right? the, the worst thing, thing as the kind of like yeah. a, a, the, um, the quote is that yeah. what's worse than uh, being talked about? Not being talked about. Because <laughs> then you don't have a reputation. No one's talking about it. No one cares. So at least <laughs> someone cares enough to basically yeah. comment on yeah. something or quote about something or talk about it. So, so you're saying like you are raising these controversies. Um, were there any, like, let's say this new term, the shit storms, like coming up? Is oh, you, totally, were totally. You facing so that the, the Nasdaq like, thing you mentioned was exactly yeah. that. That's, oh, yeah. why, that's why you don't mention the Nasdaq thing. <laughs> that was a shit storm. That was. Well, we can cut that later. Was it? <laughs> oh, was it? Was it? How no, do that you was definitely a shit storm. I mean, you're prepared uh, for it, right? Because yeah, no, you, were, uh, you say you work with that company. Totally, so totally. You're aware totally. Like that, but but you because we sold, I, I sold the Singapore business, Singapore black marketing mm-hmm. business to a company, uh, and we floated on NASDAQ in Sweden, for example. Mm-hmm. And then we went up to you know um, like 18 companies, went to a very high share price, but none of the founders could actually sell the shares. Mm-hmm. And then um, it, it, it quickly turned out that it all was not well, and all was yeah. not what it seemed. So basically, it diminished, um, and basically, I left. Yeah. Um, and then the CEO reneged on a deal to basically do a joint press release and a joint announcement and then two, two months later he announced that he had basically terminated me and that no one would shed a tear which is why if you google that you can find that which okay. wasn't true okay it basically okay. was a complete lie I'd resigned two months beforehand uh, and basically um, but I did an agreement with him that I wouldn't announce it until we did a joint um, release mm-hmm. and he reneged on that um, so but if you look at the headline it basically says that he fired me but if you look at what happened since he's lost another 15 companies since then so it basically make your own mind up was it me or was it somebody else well time already has told because now the share price is like three cents and nobody's left I think it's a tough thing to handle right and yeah, I was going through my third divorce at the time as well. So, you know, I like to combine these kind of like stresses and say, oh, there's not enough stress here. Let's have a divorce as well as leave my, my young company in. Okay. <laughs> let's Challenging. Talk about, it's interesting. Let's, let's talk about a topic that's like a little more bright. And uh, you mentioned it before, uh, your initiative for uh, women speakers. Yes. I thought that highly interesting. Yes. Maybe you can explain first a little bit what it is, what it is about. So basically, it came, I mean, it came about because I kept on talking to female speakers and I worked with mm-hmm. Primetime Professional Women's Association and a couple of talks there. And then I started working with keynote speakers, which is basically Asia women speakers. Mm-hmm. And they basically said that um, there's lots of panels out there, there's lots of keynotes out there, and they mm-hmm. keep on getting them to men. And not just men either. They're normally white men. Even though we're in Asia, they tend to be four white men or five white men. And you can see, you look on LinkedIn, they share a panel. It's like four white men or four, you know, six, <laughs> white, six men. It's like, where's the women? And it's basically people say, oh, no, we've chosen the best person. And you look deeper into those people. You go, no, you haven't chosen the best person at all. It's basically because you're more comfortable with that man you are a woman there and um, there's plenty of women out there women don't push themselves hard enough yes. 
okay. which they openly admit themselves. So they need basically, I'm not saying it has to be a man to help them, I'm just having to say that um, no one else was doing it. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, I'm going to create a brand, work with women speakers, mm -hmm. work with Keynote, work with Prime Time to actually promote women speakers, mm -hmm. so that women speakers at least get promoted, because half the thing is that women speakers don't like promoting themselves. Yes. They are much more, um, less arrogant than men, uh, uh, more self-aware of their weaknesses than men. People like me and you just basically, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, I can speak over there. Yeah, I'm fantastic. Whereas women don't do that. Women go, are you sure? No, I'm sure there's someone else better over here. And because they're just more aware, they've got more EQ and they're more sensitive yes. and so forth. All the, all the great things that make women fantastic it comes through in there, but it comes out in a weakness if you're trying to pitch yourself against a man or against somebody who's saying they're great and they're amazing and they're wonderful, but they might probably not. So what we do is basically we amplify their strengths and we basically help promote them. So we're doing the selling. So I'm doing the selling and my team are doing the selling on their behalf, effectively acting like agents, but we're specializing in female speakers. Because all the other speakers of bureaus across the world, if you look at their rationale of you know, men against women speakers, it's like they may have 10%, maybe 15% women, and the rest are all men. So it's no wonder only men basically get on the panels and the keynote. Yeah. So we're going to basically tip it around the other side. We're going to work for women directly, enhance their LinkedIn profiles, sell them on LinkedIn, do more personal branding for them and market them um, separately and, as, and become the place to be. And we're getting people, speakers from all over the world. Literally, we had people, speakers from America, people from the UK, people from Hong Kong, Sydney, Shanghai, Singapore, literally across the world. Yeah. Absolutely across the world, basically, so that's an amazing idea. Um, yeah, we, we love your initiative and we'd love to be part of it. You know, can we promote us? Mm -hmm. And that wouldn't happen if, that, if the prejudice out there wasn't actually happening. So if everything's okay, because you know, I've had criticism of people saying, oh, we don't need a white man to help us kind of thing. Well, you know, clearly you do because people are saying to me, help me. So if, and women are the kind of people who say they, they would like some help, whereas men wouldn't do this. If yeah, this yeah. situation was reversed, <laughs> there wouldn't be men going, oh, can you help me, can you help me? Because they wouldn't do that. They'd just basically sit by themselves and pretend nothing happened because that's what men do. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's the initiative to do that. So I'm very excited is, about that. Yeah, this, this approach, I think it also is like, it's a fantastic approach because, uh, I mean, the other way of doing things, like what, what I see a lot is like, quotas right yeah put, put quota gender quotas and I personally think it's a horrible thing right mm. because it's in the end not helping anyone I'm, yeah. I'm not sure what's your, what's your I know, no I totally agree I mean we're not we're not saying do quotas we're just saying pick the best yeah. person yeah correct. and most yeah. of the time the best person is not a white man yeah. who happens to be in the right in that particular job either tick the box yeah. it's probably going to be a woman yeah yeah. Um, so, but the, the problem is the woman isn't being promoted enough, mm. and the is not being amplified enough, or the man just won't pick a woman. I've had like, I've had a lunch with a speaker last week, very very high up speaker, has been doing speaking for many many years. Before that, she was a marketing director of a big big brand, actually a big German brand mm. in Singapore, and she said to me three times in the last two months. Mm. She's been pitched forward for uh, an event, for a keynote, mm -hmm. and then the C male CEO has said, nope, don't want it, I want this man over here. Oh, so wow. she's, been, precisely, okay. three times that's happened. That's mm. not coincidence, and yeah, she's yeah. a very good speaker. Mm. She's got credibility, she's got experience, she's worked for a male-dominated brand, mm. okay. and she's phenomenally well, she's with a big German brand in Singapore, doing a phenomenal job, yeah. and basically she gets looked over. So why does that happen? That's not because a man is better, it's because they've just chosen a man because yeah. of his sex, not because he's it's better. It's impressive that still happens. Uh, Obviously, it happens still yeah, today, it does. right? Without a shadow of a doubt, yeah. Or and you can see it. You just look to look on social media, look at the panels, just have men. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you it's, can see it. It's like that, yeah. I'm, I mostly see that. But again, you, you see it uh, everywhere, right? You see it in board of directors, mm. leadership, executive roles. Oh, uh, definitely politics, board of directors. Right? In, uh, definitely. I, I read uh, recently also in Malaysia parliament, they uh, promoted that 30% women should be in the parliament. Again, yeah. makes it a quote. A, 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 a quota, a, okay. A, yeah, yeah, quota, right? And then it's like, and then you're not sure. It's like, okay, did you really pick the best, or you just have to fill a quota? That's mm. why I think this this is. But uh, on the other hand, you got, for example, the SGX um, mm. in Singapore has nine percent of their directors are female. Mm. Now that's not because there aren't you know another forty percent of uh, females out there who are good directors. Yes. It's because they're not being picked. <laughs> yeah. So that's not a quota thing, that's just a prejudice thing. That's just, oh no, it's an old boys club kind of thing, we're just going to have the boys in here running the show. It's like, yeah. you need some women in this. You can't be basically, because the women are going to be better, yeah. solving better problems, being more dynamic, being more creative, and they're not just be going back, oh, he's a friend of mine, so let's put him in the direct board directors instead. And that's what's happening. So if you need quotas to build it up, then so be it. But you shouldn't need quotas, you should pick the best person. Great, great to hear that uh, you, you got something to, to help promote and um, I, I mean all I our, really all our services. I'm on the panel, <laughs> more ladies also. <laughs>
<laughs> but more, but it takes, but in all seriousness, it takes men to do it. Yeah. And I saw a post last week, for example, by a male, a higher marketing director of um, Mattel in America. Mm. And he basically said, I've been invited to speak in an all-female, also an all-male panel. And I said, no. (laughs) And an all-white male panel. And I said, no, in America. (laughs) And basically, he put it out there saying, I'm not going to speak anymore. And basically, he got (laughs) hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people saying, fantastic. And hundreds of people said... You shouldn't do that. Basically, basically, why? You know, and he got criticised, but he's in, in America, so they have a different thing. They said, "Oh, what about the blacks? What about the Hispanics? What about the gays? What about the yeah, trans?" Yeah, yeah. I go, "Oh my God, that's <laughs> far beyond the problems we have in Singapore. Where just getting females on there is a big enough challenge." <laughs> You know, that's a completely different kind of concept. Yeah, but it's good yeah. that it does take men to kind of push back and start a conversation. So at yeah. least you're challenging yeah. the people picking it, saying, why are you picking me? Why? What about these other women over here? And it takes men to say no in order for women to get a chance so that it basically stops the prejudice. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> Let's uh, pick up the last topic sure. I, uh, I want to discuss with you. And this is like, you're, you're Mr. LinkedIn, obviously. Uh, and many people would argue is like, oh, what is um, what is the best, better uh, social media platform, Facebook or LinkedIn? <laughs> and then it's like, uh, very fast it goes into like, oh, Facebook is for like, yeah. private stuff, yeah. you know, and, and LinkedIn is for professional. Whereas I saw that in Southeast Asia, also mm. in Malaysia, there's many SME uh, businesses Mm. running Facebook pages and mm. they're like not I mean when I came here it's not so long ago right mm. only five years but I saw like a lot less people using LinkedIn for professional mm. reasons mm. than they would use Facebook what, what's your take on that or what would you it's very I mean, it's very you? interesting no it's very interesting um, um, what I would say is that LinkedIn is by far and away the best place to do business Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not even on Facebook, not on Twitter, not on Instagram, because I don't believe that's the right place to do business. Because I believe that it basically, it's a bit like if you went to a weekend brunch, for example, in KL with your friends and your family, you're having a great time, you had a few drinks, and then someone comes over and pitches to you on a Sunday afternoon. Mm-hmm. That's what mm-hmm. Facebook is like. Yeah. If you meet that same person in a coffee shop on a Monday morning, mm-hmm. and they started talking to you, you talk to them, because the business context is different. Mm-hmm. So that's what I equate LinkedIn with. So LinkedIn is very much about business, whereas Facebook is not. It's also fundamentally it's very hard to actually do business on Facebook mm-hmm. in terms of the data. The data's not there. Mm-hmm. Like the data's on LinkedIn because you put input if you're a CEO of a small medium business. Yeah. So I can find all the CEOs of small medium businesses, founders and entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. uh, which are most of our clients across the world by using the data on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. I can't do that on Facebook because yeah. you don't put into Facebook, I am a CEO of a company this size. Mm-hmm. And you also can't target people by alumni. Mm-hmm. You don't put your university down. You can't target people by where you used to work or live or anything like that. Yeah. So the data's not there. So fundamentally, the data's not on Facebook. Also, you have got lots of fake accounts on Facebook, which they've now admitted, and Instagram's got fake accounts. Yeah. I mean, Facebook came out with a stat that they targeted more 15, 24-year-olds than actually lived in the world. Oh, okay. So it's like, how do you have more 15? And they even said, we don't know how we've had more 15, 24-year-olds that actually exist, but we do. Mm-hmm. And it's obviously because they've got duplicate accounts, you've got fake yeah. accounts. It's like, well, if that's the case, you're basically duplicating your advertising hitting the same people. Mm-hmm. So it's fundamentally flawed whereas you can't do that on LinkedIn it's very very hard to create a second profile mm. on LinkedIn duplicate co- profiles yeah. fake profiles so the data is with LinkedIn mm. and fundamentally too that the, the key thing is sales navigator sales navigator on LinkedIn is the heart of social selling because mm-hmm. you can pinpoint people in sales navigator create target lists send out messages to them mm. and actually generate leads mm. so I'll give you an example every time I go to for example Zurich which is our second biggest uh, market mm. I have 20 meetings um, you know, 30 meetings or 40 meetings like literally 10 a day um, all generated by Sales Navigator. Oh, wow. Okay. And I will literally say, I will be in Zurich for four days. I'd like to meet you at the uh, w, uh, JW Marriott, for example. I'll be there these days, and I will fill my diary. I do the same thing with Hong Kong, do the same thing with Sydney, do the same thing with you know London, other places. Yeah. So it's basically use the data. You can't do that on mm. Facebook. Mm. Okay. You have to buy an advertising campaign, and it's just spurious. And you basically yeah. rely on someone seeing that and saying, oh, yes, I happen to be. You have no idea that that person is, is basically the right kind of person. We yeah. look for, we work with entrepreneurs. We work with CEOs. Funny, we work with founders. differently, right? Some, some people Correct. argue with me, like, oh, if you put, advertisements and Facebook but it's, it's not targeted cheaper, it's far cheaper than of course LinkedIn, it is 10 right? times yeah. cheaper but it's yeah. not targeted mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. whereas I can reach out I can send 10 emails out to CEOs of entrepreneurs in Zurich and get 10 meetings you can't that doesn't cost me anything at all mm. that just cost me the fact I've got sales navigator and a good profile yeah. and a good proposition to talk to somebody I wouldn't even notice where to start on Facebook mm. in terms of doing the same thing it's, just, it's like it's literally you're throwing things against the wall hoping that somebody's going to see it and then hoping 
that they might then respond and say, let's meet up. You can't do that. Whereas on LinkedIn, it's use the data. And fundamentally, it comes down to the data. Fundamentally, it comes down to what you can use it for. And it's a business platform. So every single thing you do on there, it's social media, but it's in the professional context. It's business. Facebook is, to me, is not business. And they've struggled, and you can just see that. They've pushed out so many initiatives where they said it's business, or they're doing SMEs, or SMEs, or SMBs, and they failed left, right, and center. People get to slag off Facebook left, right, and center, especially now they've had all the scandals about the data. Yeah. Would you trust them? Yeah. You know, there's a reason why LinkedIn hasn't any data scandals, because there's so many opt-ins and opt-outs of LinkedIn. You're basically opting and opting out of everything. Whereas on Facebook, they don't have that. Um, that kind of like those, those ethics they also keep selling your data whereas LinkedIn doesn't mm-hmm. so it's very much there's fundamentally differences between philosophies of the two social media brands one is ultimately about business and one is not and one is growing and also the other point is <laughs> Facebook is not in China yeah. now, there is Twitter or Instagram or YouTube whereas LinkedIn is, LinkedIn is. Yeah, LinkedIn so is. LinkedIn is across the world and it's mm-hmm. across the world completely like um, Germany being a good example yeah. I went to Germany for example to do a workshop before Christmas and they obviously have Zing yeah. So we basically did a chart which basically showed that Zing has I think 13 million users and LinkedIn has 11 million users in um, Germany. But then I showed the picture of Europe. Uh-huh. Zing, zero outside. There were a few people in uh, <laughs> Switzerland, a few people out, you know, German-speaking countries. But basically, but LinkedIn, in like 150 million people. And then you suddenly see people going, uh, you know what, if I just want to target Germans in Germany, I could do Zing. Yeah, when I target yeah. somebody else, I have to use LinkedIn. Then I showed the whole world and obviously Zing is nowhere. Mm. So basically what LinkedIn is. So that's the point. It's a global professional network. And it's the only global professional network you can rely on. Use the data, enhance your personal brand, and socially sell. Okay. Okay. That was, again, a good marketing <laughs> for, for LinkedIn. But, uh, makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. And uh, I see if some of my friends which were really pro Facebook, I can come to <laughs> these arguments. Here. You have to read my book. Yeah. <laughs> I can, read the book, it's all about LinkedIn. I can really recommend it. Again, you'll find it, we put up uh, on the links, uh, you can buy the soft copies, really, yeah. I can recommend well, you it. Do the, uh, you can do the Kindle, the audiobook, the paperback, the hardback. Everything. Amazing, yeah. yeah. Uh, I read one, uh, amazing, I can recommend that. And um, I think the others are, uh, as interesting too. They are, yeah, and this, this is the best one, because uh, uh, this is the latest one, so this is obviously the best one. Okay, cool. Um, let me come to my uh, last question. I'm sure. going to have a couple of more questions. Sure, go for it. We have to respect your time also, and we don't want to make the videos also too long. Um, <laughs> but we know, uh, we announced it earlier also, Malaysia will be, uh, LinkedIn will build their um, offices in Malaysia yes. to discover more in the South Asian, uh, Southeast yeah. Asian market, yeah. which, is, uh, which is quite cool. Um, well, I think um, maybe your your uh, summary or your uh, what you can give the entrepreneurs, the startups, yeah. like all the tips that you put in all your books, which is the most top number one tip that you will give everyone. Very easy. Their LinkedIn very profile. easy. I mean, very easy. It's basically one top tip is your personal brand. Your personal brand that was made of your photograph. Have a photograph. Have a strap line. And what I mean by a strap line is, you know, Chris Reed delivers LinkedIn or Chris Reed the only CEO with a mohawk delivering LinkedIn that's your strap line what's your strap line like Nike has just do it Apple has think different what's your brand positioning statements and that have that in your LinkedIn because it's part of your keywords and then fill in your summary section so many people don't fill in their summary section that's your story that's your bio that's why someone starts a relationship with you and don't be about this is my work this is my work oh it's about talk about yourself a bit more talk about your leadership talk about why you moved country talk about different things and then have a background picture a lot of real people don't realize they can use the background picture to market I change mine three, four times a week because I treat it like an advertising space. And then add media in. So you have to treat LinkedIn as a living, breathing profile, which you change on a regular basis because you get people coming to you. So put videos there. Some of this. Put videos. LinkedIn loves videos. So put videos there. This is all part of your personal brand. So basically, the number one tip is enhance your personal brand by doing what LinkedIn asks you to do, the simple stuff. If you do that, your ratings will go up, your views will go up, your search prints will go up, and you'll start engaging. And then people go, wow, that's amazing. Cool. Thank you so much, Pleasure. Chris. Thank, Thank you. you very much again for uh, um, uh, joining us and giving us Pleasure. the opportunity and the time to talk about that. Um, we put the video uh, next Tuesday. And uh, yeah, hope you guys like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And then we see you again uh, in the following week. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.